Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story today is entitled Storm Approach. This is the story of the men in the Air Force who man ground control approach installations around the world. Through all kinds of weather, they stand ready to guide pilots and their aircraft to safe and accurate landings using that modern device that knows no bounds, radar. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, there's no thrill in the world like flying a jet, cleaving through the sky at the speed of sound pushing against the outer limits of space, blazing the way to a new air future. Yes, it's an exciting life, one that offers unlimited opportunities to young men of ambition and vision. If you're between 19 and 26 and a half, single and a high school graduate, a wonderful future in jet aviation is open to you. Become an Air Force aviation cadet. You'll be flying jets easily and safely within 18 months. Aviation cadet training is rough, rugged, rigorous, but the rewards are well worth it. You graduate as an Air Force lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year with a promising career ahead of you. You'll be a man fully equipped for positions of responsibility in the fields of military and commercial aviation. Guarantee your future as an aviation cadet. See your nearest United States Air Force recruiting station or pay a visit to your nearest United States Air Force base for complete details. And now your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Storm Approach. During the night, the men on duty at the weather station of Hill Air Force Base near Ogden, Utah, observed the familiar signs and read their meaning. A low pressure area to the northeast was building rapidly and swirling angrily down the Wasatch Mountains. They predicted it would hit the Ogden area with heavy snow, driving winds and freezing temperatures. In the parlance of the old timers, the storm was a ring-tailed blue norther, which had no business yowling around so far from the panhandle. But in anybody's language, it meant a blizzard was moving in. At 0800 hours, when Sergeants Jim Carey and Martin Pierce went off duty at the GCA installation, the first fine flakes had already begun to sift down. Oh, boy, this is going to be a doozy. Yeah, let's hit the road. Coffee, man, coffee. Uh, Nancy will fix your cup when we get to my place. What's oh, a big rush? You afraid of a little snow or are you homesick? Both. Come on, Martin, I'm in a hurry. Look, this snow isn't going to get that bad for a while, Jim. Yeah, not the snow. I'm worried about Nancy. Why? What's the matter with her? I don't know. She wasn't feeling so hot when I left last night. <laughs> you talk like a newlywed. I am. Seven years. Get in. You know, I don't know why I let you order me around. I got just as much rank as you. <laughs> Because I'm older and wiser, and you don't want to walk ten miles home. <laughs> well, I suppose you got something there, as far as the walking goes. Well, let's hope these windshield wipers don't stick. What's the matter with Nancy? She got a bug or something? No, uh, she felt sick to her stomach, dizzy all last night. I wasn't worried till she finally admitted she took a spill on the ice yesterday afternoon. Hey, that's not so good. Oh, that's why I want to get home. If she's not feeling any better, I'll bring her back here to the base hospital. Why don't you call her up? I don't want to waste time, Martin. I want to get home. Storm's beginning to get rough. Are you sure you don't want me to run you home first? No, no, I like your wife's coffee. If she's not feeling well, maybe I can give you a hand. Appreciate it. I'll send you a bill. Yeah. Come on, follow me. Now watch the ice. Hey, you're talking to a polar bear, son. Now, get in here, quick. Uh. Nancy! Hey, honey, I'm home. 
Maybe she's still asleep, huh? Yeah, maybe. Hey, kiddo, you... Nancy! Nancy, for the love... Wait a minute, Jim. Don't move her yet. She didn't... She no, isn't... no, I don't think anything's broken. Let's get her up on the couch. Get her legs... Yeah. Yeah. Nancy? Nancy! She's out, Jim. Get some blankets. Smelling salts if you got any. Right. I'll call the base. Tell them to send an ambulance. It's a waste of time. Call the base hospital and tell them we're on our way with her. Here, let's try this. Hold her head up a little higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now she's coming around. Oh, Jim. I thought you'd never come. We better get moving. All right, call the hospital. I'll get her wrapped up in this blanket. Yeah. Hello? 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 Oh, no dice. Line must have gone out. That went out fast. Let's get some more blankets around her and hit the road. Better slow down a bit, Jim. Going to a skid, they'll dig us out three days from now. I can see. Yeah, well, I can too. About two and a half feet. How is she? Gonna be all right. Slow up. That's what I meant about slowing down. Can't see a blasted thing. As well, long as the road stays straight, we'll be okay. Yeah, but it doesn't. I can't stop now. If I stop, we'll never get started again. It's starting to drift pretty bad. I know. I think they'd have a snow plow off. Just pray we don't run into a stuck car or a truck. Just pray. Well, one thing... Look how Jim... What, what was that? Oh, I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. It was that snowplow you were hoping for? Well, it's done some good. The road's a little better here. Now, don't start hitting the accelerator again. How, how is she? She's not going to get any better if you don't watch it. Oh, stop being an old woman. Now, the, the, the road turns off here somewhere. Slow up. I don't dare slow There's the fork. Left, left, man, left. Oh, I think I'll apply for an instrument rating. An old age pension will do for me. made it. There's the main gate at the base ahead. Sergeant, call the hospital. Tell them we got an emergency. Hey, what's the scoop, man? My wife, she's sick. Let's not waste time talking. Well, go on through and watch the road. You're getting mighty mean. You're telling us. Ever gonna come out here? Easy does it, boy. What time is it? It's nine o'clock. Want a cigarette? No, no, thanks. Well, she's gonna be all right. That's what I keep telling myself. Only I don't believe me. Well, I wouldn't kid you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, look, one thing you. How, how is she, Doctor? Well, you can go in now and see her for a minute if you want. Is she gonna be all right? When she fell on the ice, she injured herself internally. That wouldn't be too serious, except for one thing. What's that? Well, she has a blood condition. Her blood won't clot. What does that mean, sir? We are giving her plasma, Sergeant. I said, what does it mean, Captain? Well, it means, Sergeant, that she's in bad shape. Isn't there anything you can do? Well, there's a serum called fibrinogen. It's used to make blood clot. Have you and... used it? Well, I would, Sergeant, if we had any. It's, it's very rare. It's hard to come by. Can't you get hold of some? I've already called the base commander, Colonel Cole, and told him the situation. He's, he's contacting the Red Cross people. They're working on it at this very moment. I, I suppose there isn't much time. I'm afraid not a great deal, Sergeant. Well, I, is she conscious? Semi-conscious. You've given her a shot. I'll, I'll go in and see her. Colonel Cole is over at the Red Cross building. We'll go over there, if you like, after you've seen your wife. Captain, they, they've just got to locate some of that stuff. They will, Sergeant. I'm sure they will. Fine when I am. Oh, the finest. Now, you just take it easy. What happened? I began to feel dizzy. You're, you're going to be all right. You hurt yourself when you fell yesterday. Silly girl. How, how do you feel? Kind of dopey. Well, you go to sleep. I'll be right here. 
Yes, I, I think I will go to sleep. Don't look so worried, honey. I'll be all right. Sure you will. Uh, Colonel Cole, uh, this is Sergeant Carey. Hello, Sergeant. Tough luck about your wife. Yes, sir. Colonel, our regional Red Cross headquarters in Salt Lake City reports that they had no fibrinogen on hand. We have calls out to every major city in the West. Thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Let us know just as soon as you locate some. Tacoma, negative. Spokane, negative. San Francisco, negative. Los Angeles. Yes, we have a supply of 12 units. How much do you need? We need four units, and we need them just as soon as possible. Well, if we air express them to No, you, no, we... no, we've got to have them faster than that. You stand by for a call from us. We'll work out the details here. Right. Good luck. Thanks. Mrs. Roberts? We thank you. From the bottom of my heart. You people have done an excellent job. Well, I'm just happy we were able to locate the serum so quickly. Well, I'm afraid the biggest problem lies ahead. Yes. What are the reports on the storm, sir? How soon can we expect a break so that a plane can get in here? Oh, let up for the next 24 hours at least. Oh, we can't wait that long. Sir, could a jet make it in here? I don't know, Captain. I honestly don't know. With GCA, a pilot... It's not the approach I'm worried about, Sergeant, as much as the storm itself. No commander would order a man to fly in here under present weather conditions. I, I think we'd better get on the phone to Air Force headquarters, sir, in Washington. There isn't much time. Can you tell me how much, Captain? No, sir, but I wouldn't want to say any more than two hours. Well, you're taking 86, about half that, to get here from Los Angeles. Now all we have to do is find ourselves a pilot. Operator, this is Colonel Cole. I want you to put a top priority call through... You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Storm Approach. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Daring and imagination, courage and science. These have propelled us straight into the jet age, the age of airspeed faster than sound, of flight into the farthest frontiers of the sky. How would you, young man listening today, like to master one of those jet planes, sleek, powerful aircraft which represent the last word in military aviation? They're considered safer to fly than propeller planes. If you qualify for and successfully complete the interesting, exacting training of an aviation cadet, you'll have your chance. As a pilot in the United States Air Force, practicing a challenging career in the service of your country, you'll start as a second lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. Now, if you're between 19 and 26 and a half, in excellent health, single and meet the mental and educational requirements, you're eligible to apply for the 16-month flight training course. See if you can qualify at your nearest Air Force base or drop in at your local United States Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Storm Approach. Luck was with Sergeant Jim Carey and his wife that day, because they found a pilot, one of the best. Major Robert B. Madden, quality control pilot of the Air Material Command, who was assigned to the Inglewood, California plant of North American Aviation. Major, there's one thing about this serum. Yes, I know. Handle it with care. That, of course, but it's got to be kept at a temperature between 32 and 50 degrees. And above all, it mustn't freeze up. I see. Well, suppose I set my cockpit temperature at 40. That would be fine. Yes, and I'll freeze up. Well, let's get it aboard. I'll get out of here. They seem to want the stuff in a hurry. It's really a matter of life and death. Inglewood Tower. This is Air Force Jet 7643. In number one position, ready for takeoff. Roger. Seven, six, four, three, rolling. We have an inbound report from Flight Service. According to them, his ETA is 1210. 
But it can't be much later than that. You request that we have our final controller man on the scope. Sir, that's me. Well, now, so I don't... right now, I'm the best final controller on this field or any field. Uh, you were on duty last night, weren't you, Sergeant? Captain, I don't care if I'd been on duty seven nights in a row. Right now, I'm the best. I want to be on that scope. You will be, Sergeant. Let's get on over to the GCA shack. I'll be at the hospital, Colonel Cole, waiting. We better not try to walk it. We'll go in my Jeep. I'm not sure we could walk it. I'm not sure anybody can fly in it. You might get the idea it was snowing. Ah, right, here we are. Pile in, men. Ah, it's a little better in here. At least you can sit up and look around. Sir, I don't think anybody can fly in this stuff. You don't know Major Madden, Sergeant. No, but I know what's out there, sir. Now well, we better worry about what's right here. Come on, baby, get the ice out of your throat. It's going to be a long walk, sir. Come on, girl, grab hold, fire. There, you see? I knew she wouldn't let me down in the clutch. Well, how about the windshield, sir? We'll go on instruments. That'll start melting once we get a little heat in here. That'll be about next summer, won't it, sir? April, anyway. You all set to take off? Baby, you just home on the GCA shack, you hear? Yes, uh, Lieutenant? No word, Captain? Not yet. Can a plane fly in this kind of weather? <laughs> I, I'm no pilot. Any change? No, sir. Would you like some coffee? Mm, no, thank you. I, I'd just like that phone to ring. Any chance of the storm letting up? Evidently not for some time. All we can do now is to wait and hope and pray. Poor husband, the sergeant. I wonder if he's... Well, he's over in the GCA shack. He's going to bring the pilot in. He's what? Captain Morari speaking. What? No, no. This isn't a base exchange. Okay. Well, I'll let you know if there's any change, Captain. Uh, who's with her now? Lieutenant Marks. All right. Uh, both of you had better stand by as soon as I get word, I... Captain Morari speaking. Yes, Lieutenant. I'll be right there. That was Lieutenant Marks. Mrs. Carey is starting to slip fast. Come along. You should be contacting the tower any minute now. I don't envy him. I sure don't know how I'll ever thank him. It'll be up to you, Sergeant, as much as to him. Yes, I know. Picking up anything? Just a bad case of nerves. You sure you want to be on the scope, Sergeant? I wouldn't be any place else. Oh, no, I didn't figure you would be. Uh, Colonel Cole. Oh, yes, yes, right. Go ahead. Uh, I see. No, no, that's all right. Any decided change, call me at once. Right. Thank you. Goodbye. That was uh, the weather. The storm center's passed, but uh, there'll be no appreciable change for the next four or five hours. Isn't that peachy? Well, at least now we're sure of the straight odds. About a million to one. Well, I wouldn't say that, Sergeant. With you on the scope and Major Madden flying, that'll make it better than that. With all the moral support you've got, that cuts it down about 50-50. Which, if you're willing to take a chance, isn't bad at all. Ah, uh, nothing to it. Well, I guess I'll take the chance, but I sure wish we'd hear from the Major. <laughs> Tower, Air Force Jet 7643, OB range station at 3, 2, 40,000 feet. Looks kind of rough down there, boys. Roger, Air Force Jet 7643, over a hill range at 3, 2, descend to 7,000 feet. I repeat, 7,000 feet. Contact GCA on Fox Channel. <laughs> The words back and forth sound calm enough, almost routine. But there's nothing calm or routine about the drama building to its climax. If you've flown in the clear above the storm crest, you know the feeling of repugnance for what lies under you. You know the feeling of wanting to stay clear and escape. 
You know, it's a black, swirling vortex that reaches up to suck you down and blind you and break you in its ugly, vicious embrace. You know there are winds there to rip and tear. There is snow and ice to weigh down and spoil the delicate precision of flight. You know death is waiting, crouched in the black sea below, hungrily, confidently. Two, seven, zero degrees. Roll out. Now throttle back. Try to relax. Keep relaxed. And now, into the vortex. Air Force Jet 7643, this is Hill, GCA. Now continue your letdown. I've got you nicely on the scope. Roger, Hill, GCA. Air Force Jet 7643, this is Hill, GCA. If no transmissions are received for a period of one minute during this approach, make an emergency pull-up, climb to and maintain an altitude of 6,500. Hold on the southeast course of Hill radio range between the station and a point four minutes southeast. Contact Hill GCA for further instructions. Over. Roger. Understand emergency instructions. Initial cockpit check complete. Gear down and lock. Air Force Jet 7643, level off at 6,000 feet. Turn to a heading of 250 degrees. 250 degrees. Do you read? Over. Receiving you loud and clear. Turbulence increasing. All right. Now, turn to a heading of 160 degrees. Maintain 6,000 feet. You're on the downwind leg. Roger. Turning to 160 degrees. Holding 6,000 feet. Can you hold 160 degrees? Doing all I can. Turbulence rugged. You're doing fine. Maintain your altitude. Air Force Jet 7643, this is your final controller. Turn left to heading of 340 degrees. You're four miles from touchdown, cleared for standard rate of descent. Now you're drifting left, turn five degrees east. The new heading is 345. You're now on final approach, check gear. Now you're below your glide path and drifting right, correct three degrees left. Uh, your, your heading is 342. Uh, you're 50 feet below the glide path. Pull up a little. You are now two miles from touchdown. You're on the glide path. The glide path is excellent. Hold it steady. You're one mile from touchdown. It's starting to drift off right. You're, you're drifting right. Correct three degrees left. You're heading... Uh, uh, you'll have to pull up and go around again. Make an emergency pull up. Climb to and maintain. What happened, Sergeant? Anderson will run again, sir. Well, he simply got to get him down here in one piece. If anyone can, he will, sir. Captain Rari, Colonel Cole. Yes, sir. We haven't got Major Madden down as yet. What's the situation there? No appreciable change, sir. Well, is there still a chance? If there's no chance, I'll order the Major to get out of here. There's still a chance, sir. I I'll call if there's any change. Right. You're on the glide path, two miles from touchdown. A holder, Major. Holder right there. Check gear. One mile from touchdown. Now, correct three degrees left. That's good. That's fine. Fine. 20 feet below glide path. It's good. It's good. You're over the edge of the runway. Can you see it? I've got it, boy. Hold on. Get that jeep out on that runway on the double. <laughs> Major, you look frozen. Colonel, I am. It was a cross between freezing to death and being scared to death. Not to mention landing in the middle of a blue norther. Is that what you call it? <laughs> I've got another name for it. Slightly rough, eh? That's the understatement of the year, Colonel. I don't ever want it any rougher than that. Well, there's one man around here who won't have the words to thank you with. The same goes for me. Where is that final controller? I don't think there's a better one in the Air Force. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be surprised, Bob. It was his wife you brought the serum for. Wow. Well, I think maybe he and I will spend the rest of the day patting each other on the back. You're lucky.
looking better already. Funny, I, I feel better. I went to sleep. It seemed like I'd never wake up. But I did. It was like you'd never gone away. I never have. I've been with you the whole time. You must be tired. Oh, a cup of coffee and I'll feel fine. You think I'll be in here long? No. With these wonder drugs, I'll have you fixed up in no time. Nice to have them so handy. Yeah, the doctor says you'd better rest. I'll see you in the morning. All right, darling. And thank everyone for me. I love you. I love you. Major Madden, I don't know how a man thanks another man for saving his wife's life. Well, Sergeant, if I, uh, if I help to save your wife's life, you sure help to save mine. You didn't have to take the risk, sir. No, I suppose I didn't. But then we all do a lot of things in this old world we don't have to do. <laughs> I guess it makes life interesting. How is she? She's going to be fine. Just fine. The word opportunity is described in the dictionary as a convenient chance, a favorable opening as in business. And that definition can certainly be applied to the United States Air Force Medical Service when it comes to the opportunity they offer all qualified registered nurses. Because of our increased military mobilization, more and more opportunities, favorable openings in the profession of nursing are now open in the Air Force Nurse Corps. For example, the Air Force Nurse Corps offers you a life which combines service with travel, work with recreation. You'll be a commissioned officer with officers' pay and allowances, free service insurance, paid vacation and retirement credits, too. In addition, you have the chance of taking postgraduate training in many nursing fields, thus qualify for further advancement. There are other benefits, too, such as worldwide travel, an attractive uniform, and the chance to serve with the finest men and women in the world. Most important of all, though, is the fact that you can contribute your nursing skills to keep the United States Air Force strong and healthy, ready to perform their mission when needed. Get all the details on how you can become an Air Force nurse by writing to the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>